good afternoon anywhere you are in the world I'm sorry for coming in a bit late today because uh, I had a lot of things that I was doing at home today and, and it has been long that I did politics here as you know I'm not just a prophet. I um, I only do church on Sunday. The rest of the day is prophet is uh, business and uh, politics. And it's been long that I did politics. This is because I decided to build the ministry and uh, in our in our there is a parable in my culture that says before you relax you must sit so I was busy laying foundation in Nigeria and uh, by the grace of God we have laid the foundation Currently here in Nigeria, in Imo State, we are having the single largest congregation. The church is standing. The power of God is being seen every day. So we are back to politics. As you know, you know, I, I'm someone that don't move with emotion. Uh, if I'm someone that move with emotion, I wouldn't go far. I take time to strike. There, there are different types of snake, but there is a snake. That snake is a very short snake. That snake lives in the sand. If you go to beach, like, please share the broadcast. Share the broadcast quickly. I'm not going to waste your time. It's just five minutes. I want to address uh, President Teddy Galungu quickly. And then we take it from there. This is just the beginning. We are building the foundation from here. Any moment from now, many of you have been asking, see one, why are you quiet? Why are you quiet? My, my Facebook page has been flooded by people, especially from Zambia, who, who say, see one, see what you have done to us. See the person you influenced us to vote. See the person you told us to vote. See what is going on. So many, so many people both from the ruling party and the and the opposition things people are, are writing me every blessed day when are you going to talk i hope you are going to follow exactly what i want to say we are going to take it one after the other we are not going to rush it but i can guarantee you as many of you know that i don't fail when i tell you that i don't fail i don't fail even if I, if no matter what, no, ma no matter what, no matter the government, no matter who, once I tell you that we are going, we go. And it's just one way, it's going, never return. So uh, many of you have say, why are you quiet? Share the broadcast anywhere you are, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, share the broadcast. Share it in the groups on WhatsApp. Share it everywhere. Let people hear my voice this morning. We are going to start by laying foundation. Because if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So share the broadcast quickly anywhere you are. I want to speak something. The other day, I was about to address the nation of Zambia. I promised you that I was coming live and I couldn't come live. And many people came and said... Ah, see one, you have disappointed us. I know that that night people waited. And I know that so many people we are disappointed. People we are disappointed in hundreds of thousands, in millions. Everybody was waiting. Everybody wanted to hear me speak, as I promised. But at the end of the day, I didn't speak. You know what happened? People are saying, ah, see one was a bribe see one was giving money to keep quiet see one was paid to keep quiet <laughs> i was laughing the reason why i was laughing is because i am a soldier that know how to shoot check 
my track record. I have never lost a battle in my life. Check my track record. Check whether the ones I fought with government, the government of Guyana, the one I fought with the government of Zambia, the, the individuals that I fought. I want you to check, go through them and tell me any one of them where I failed. I, I never failed and I've never failed and I can never fail. So that's why the reason why I don't fail is because I take time. I don't just start vomiting. I don't just come and start talking. Hey, hey, this, hey, that, hey, this, hey, that. No, before I strike, I take time and I prepare myself and I do all my work knowing that once we start, we have started. So look at this. That night, what happened? I decided to keep quiet because of one thing. Whatever I do is for the people. It's not about me. Anything you see me do is for the love of the people, not for me. Including the ministry. Including anything. What's anything you see me doing, I don't do it for myself. I do it for the people. And once the people are suffering, once the people are crying, I don't feel good. I feel very, very bad. Why did I not proceed with that live broadcast? It was simple. It was just one thing that happened. Number one, if I come to you and tell you that, okay, HH has failed, who are we going to replace HH with? There is, we, we must follow this very, very well. Who are we going to replace HH with? Is the next president coming from PF? Who is he? Is the next president coming from SP? Is the next president coming from DA or what? Or, or what, what? Who are we going to? I don't want to be like those people that tell you, ah, that one is a false prophet. It's, it's, see, one is a false prophet. But they cannot point you to the real prophet. When I come to you and tell you that this one is not good, I must present you with an option. I don't want to create problems. And there is no option. Just like people who rise up and say, ah, that one is a false prophet, don't go there. But they cannot point you to the real prophet where to go. I don't want to do that. I am a very, very intelligent human being that when I tell you to say, this is not good, let us go with this. Just like I came and told you to say, Eddie Galungu is not good, let us go to HH. I presented a person to you so if HH must go, I, we must also have a replacement. And this is where my problem with PF came. This is where my problem with Edgar Lungu came in now. Edgar Lungu lost election in 2021. We just had a little bit of network problem. I hope it will not happen again. So, Edgar lost election in 2021. And after he lost election, for the first time in the history of Zambia, a, a political party that lost election was still intact. People were not leaving the party. The party was actually growing. What they needed was a way forward. They needed a leader. They needed somebody that could lead them. Edgar Lungu held onto power. He wanted to come back and be the president. Now, this is where African leaders fail. This is where they make mistakes. There is what is called a president and a godfather to the president. Every powerful person on earth has a godfather. I see a one that is speaking to you here now. I have a godfather. Everyone that is doing well on earth, big, has a godfather. You can never be greater than your godfather. Whether you like it or not, you can never 
be greater than your godfather. You will always respect your godfather. What Eddie Galungu was going to do to the PF was to play a role of a godfather. This is very simple. It's just that we, we allow our emotions sometimes to take better part of us. If not, you have lost election. You have seen that your party is still intact. Your party is still powerful. Almost all the people that served as ministers in your party are still with you. You are supposed to live and allow a convention. In that convention, you have already secretly anointed the person that will take over. As a godfather. That is where he made the mistake. And this is where this is one of the reasons why I couldn't do that broadcast. Because I cannot say, let's let's support this candidate. Let's support that candidate. When I know that they are not going anywhere. Eddie Galungu is not coming back to rule Zambia. You cannot you can just mark it somewhere. It is not coming back to rule Zambia. But there is a way he could come back and rule Zambia. Very simple. Is anointing a political son and being a godfather. For example, he picks Mundibil and said, we are going to convention. You are going to be the next president of Zambia. I am your political father. I am going to guide you to tell you what to do. Remember, he already had over 1.8 million people that voted for him. 1.8 people that voted for him. They were intact. In fact, they are intact. They voted for him no matter everything that we did against him. He still had 1.3 people, 1.8 people that believed him. Anyone he anoints automatically has 1.8 million votes. That one is not even negotiable. Now, during the campaign, when we were campaigning for HH, there are a lot of promises that we made for people, which many of them were not fulfilled. Out of 2.8 million people that voted for us as UPND, how many people are disappointed? I'm not even going far. I'm not even talking about the population of Zambia. I'm talking even from UPND themselves. The food soldiers, the cadres. How many of them are happy today? How many of them are disappointed? So you can see that that's 2.8 million already. It's not 2.8 million. Why this guy is having 1.8 million? Are you following what you are saying? The problem, instead of doing the right thing, you go and consult Sunday Sinyangwe. Who is Sunday Sinyangwe? A fool that don't, a fool that his church is like a, a, a person that don't have up to 100 people in his church. He's failing to mobilize his church. A church that he has held for more than 20 years and he has not achieved anything in his church. He's a person that a, a former president went to consult. We, what does Sunday Sinyangwe know? He cannot help himself. He cannot help his family. Then Eddie Galungu go to him and he's telling Eddie Galungu, God said, forgive the people. Forgive people for what did the people do? What did the people of Zambia do to him? Eddie Galungu stole a lot of money. That one is, is guaranteed. No one is even... You don't, if you go to Swaziland today, almost all the shopping malls, they are owned by Eddie Galungu. Eddie Galungu has a construction company in, Zam, in, in Swaziland. That, the, the biggest construction company in Swaziland is owned by Eddie Galungu. How many billions did he, leave, he, he, he carry from Zambia and took outside the nation? The guy looted the country. That is guarantee. If there is anyone that should be asking for forgiveness, it's not the people of Zambia. Eddie Galungu should be the one asking for forgiveness. The problem is that any person that wears suit and say, praise the Lord, you believe. An idiot that prophesied that HH will never be the president. You still had the courage. You are a fool. Eddie Galungu also. You still had the courage to go out to his church and, and, and he tell you, forgive the nation. Who, who are you forgiving? You, need, you yourself, people need to forgive you. Because you, I don't want to fight today. Like I said, this, we are just starting. I'm just laying foundation. War 
doesn't start from the first day. I'm just laying foundation. I just want to help the opposition to sit up so that we start and start moving gradually, gradually. It's a gradual process. But I can guarantee you that this battle, you see this one, we have won it. I swear upon Godfather. You can come back to this broadcast and tell me if what I'm saying will not happen. I, I don't need even to talk about that. But let us proceed. So, you are supposed to allow a conviction, anoint a candidate. You can actually say, mm -mm, I'm anointing uh, uh, Brian Mundibile to come and take over. And secretly, you call your ministers, your top M, M, what, what members, committee members, say they see, as you go for conviction, vote for Brian. Anyone you speak to, we of definitely vote for your godson. And once that is done, PF will now have a president. And because you have a president and you are already strong on the ground, especially in the rural area, you will now start mobilizing. You yourself as, as a former president can actually pretend like you are not doing anything and be collecting your salary. And be eating your thing. The problem is that, let me tell you this. The problem, somebody say you want to fight Lungo again. No, I'm not fighting Lungo again. I want to help him. The problem is that you don't learn. Ropia Banda was your godfather, Edgar Lungo, but he was hiding. He didn't come out openly until the time of election. You can actually be a godfather. So maybe, for example, Bowman Lusam, push him to be PF president. I'm giving an example. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a Bowman Lusam person, but I'm giving an example. But let one person come from PF. You'll be a godfather. If you become a godfather, all the benefits we are getting when you were a president, once you become a president, you'll be getting those benefits. In fact, more. It happened in the United States of America. Joe Biden was a nobody. People voted him because of Obama. Obama was a former president. But today, Obama is a political godfather. All the things that he wanted to implement when he was in power that uh, 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 Trump could not implement. The moment Biden took over power, those things were implemented. You could come back and become the president of Zambia, but a God president of Zambia. You decide what happens from within. But unfortunately, what happened? You blew off everything because you are greedy. You are a greedy person. You wanted to come back and become a president. What are you going to achieve that you didn't achieve in seven years? What do you want, dear, that you did not achieve in seven years? Let me tell you this, what you don't know. When Satan died, you took over power out of sympathy. You didn't do politics. You are not a politician. You and the church, you are just the same. You are not a politician. You don't read anything. That's why I'm looking at HS today. I'm laughing. Because my uh, HH is not a politician, and those that call themselves his political advisor don't even know anything about politics. So Edgar Lungu is not a politician. You are not a politician. You are a lawyer. And then you came into politics and stayed many years. You didn't learn anything. If you were a politician by now, you are still going to be the president of Zambia. I'm telling you the gospel truth. If you were a politician by now, you are still going to be the president of Zambia. But the problem, you are, you are, you are not a, a, a politician. You are a lawyer. So you brought in the mentality of lawyer, just like President Church has brought in business mentality. And we are seeing how things are going. I'm coming there any moment from today. Now, this is what's supposed to be done. Allow a conviction. 
Even with your own money. You have money. You have a lot of money. You are, you are a billionaire. Out of your money. Sponsor that candidate that you want. He comes in through PF. And PF may not win the election alone. Now, there is President Member. The SP. There is Calabar. There are so many other opposition political parties. You come together. If you did that, by now, PF was going to be running. Mao Sampa was not going to hijack. Mao Sampa is, is a lunatic. Mao Sampa is a mad person. He's not taking PF anywhere. Uh, so, you know, somebody who... Somebody who... Uh, um, sorry, let me block this idiot. This is my name to scam people. So, somebody who... Who cannot even, since he became the PF president, he cannot go out and mobilize his party. He's afraid. He's always outside the country. You can see that it's a lunatic. Mao Sampa is not even an option. But whatever happened in PF, Edgar Lungu must be blamed. Edgar Lungu must be blamed. For somebody a tout like Mao Sampa to come and hijack PF is because Edgar Lungu was greedy. He didn't want to do the right thing. He didn't want to allow convention. He wanted to come back and rule. But unfortunately, that is not possible. He can never, never come back and rule. For him to rule, he must come back through another person. Now, people of Zambia, uh, the opposition parties in Zambia, still have one year in between to organize and come and do the right thing. For Eddie Galungu, my advice to you before I cut this broadcast, like I said, I just came to Lay Foundation. Before we proceed, the main broadcast is coming. I didn't announce. The main broadcast is done at night by, by 9 p.m. At that time, everybody is in their house waiting to hear. So this one, I just came to the office. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of people here that I must attend to. But I've been looking at PF, uh, PFA, the opposition parties in Zambia. I've been looking at them. I feel pity for them because they don't know what to do they don't know where to go they don't know who to run to they don't know exactly the button to press that's why i came to say let me offer them my advice for you people that are in pf especially edgar long you still have an opportunity number one to step away from pf pf is dead with what has happened i can assure you that PF is gone. You st while you still have support, register a new political party. And not you registering it. Let somebody from a PF that has a good record register the new political party. Support that person. Speak to your ministers, those that are loyal to you, secretly, let them support that political party. PF is gone. In 2025, when we are going to start the campaign properly, when you do it, you start mobilizing. Once you register, maybe Mundibile registers it, a person that has a good record, a good track record, you register the party, start mobilizing it on the ground. You don't show yourself. All you can do is bring out finances. To mobilize that party. To support that party. I'm telling you it's easy. It's very, very easy. This is not what God can do for you. This is what intelligence and political intelligence will do for you. Once that party is released, PF. PF is dead. You can never get PF again. Leave it. From, and the, beside, PF already had a bad name. Register a political party. Call all the people that are loyal to you to start supporting that party. Start talking to people. In 2025, next year, when campaign will start, 
<laughs> Before you know it, what? It's a revolution. This day, with with media, with social media, you don't need to work so hard for you to win an election. It's easy. Within eight months, you can organize a party and win an election. Very easy. So register a party. Not with not your name appearing. You are now a godfather. That you must take it or leave it. You are now a political godfather. You can never be a president of Zambia again. But there is something bigger than being a president. It's called godfather. I myself, no matter how big I am, when I see the godfather, I bow. Godfather is the greatest authority. So if you become a political godfather, the person who is going to be the president is your son. Hey, my son, this company came here, give them contract. They will be given a contract. The same privilege you were enjoying when you were president, you will still enjoy it. And in 2025, merge that party with SP, Socialite Party. You come in agreement. I will come and advise you again. I will, I will, I will come and help you. You match with SP. <laughs> and leave the rest for us. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm so sorry that uh, many people, thousands of people, were waiting for me to uh, come live and pre pre teach them about Africa, power, and so on and so forth. Especially those that are not watching from Zambia. You are disappointed because I'm talking politics today. You know, it's very important that I help also people politically, people that need help. Next week, we are going to continue with our African thing. But any moment from now, this week, I'm going to announce, we are going to start our live broadcast politics. But take this advice that I've given to you. If you are in Zambia, this is for your good. Even for the government. The government may say, ah, see, our one has turned against us again. What? No, it's for your good. When there is strong opposition, you do well. <laughs> if there is nobody opposing you, if there is no one giving you advice, how are you going to do well? So take it also good on your side. Then from your side, you wake up and do the right thing. People that fought for you are suffering. People that suffered for you, PND, are suffering. Let me tell you again and again. People that fought for you are suffering. Your own members, you PND members, are going through hell. You PND members are dying of hunger. Just your members, not to talk of the, the, the major population of Zambia. If you don't wake up, that's your own concern. I have nothing to lose. I've never lost anything before and i will never lose even if you bring the entire government of the world to fight me it will not succeed you better take my advice and we progress how can you tell me that in the year 2020 2021 chishim was dividing the nation of zambia Chishimbakambi was planting the seed of division in Zambia. Chishimbakambi divided the country into two. Bembas against Tongas. Tongas against Bembas. Chishimbakambi acknowledged his mistake and went to Chief Monse and asked for forgiveness for dividing the nation. He was forgiven. Later, he continued. In fact, before the election, Chishim Bakambiro was a Satan. He was a Lucifer. He was an agent of destruction. He was the devil that, that it was, he was the devil himself. He was so bitter. His boys killed a lot of European guys. Chishim Bakambiri with a deed in Awaki, and so on, kidnapped a family, set them up against 
a church. Now, few years down the line, because you have power, you think that you are wise. A church, you think now that you are almighty, you decide what happened. You, you wake up, you say, oh, I've forgiven this person. Just because none of your family member, they didn't kill your children. They didn't kill your wife. You are intact. You wake up. You want to spend money, millions, to evacuate Chishimba Kambul. Chishimba Kambul, that is very rich. How many tracks that he, does he have? Is he the only sick person in Zambia? Go around the hospitals in Zambia. UPND supporters are littered in the hospital. They don't have money to buy medicine. Then as a president, as a government, you want to take Chishimba Kambui. The one that stood against the people. The one that divided the nation. The one that, the one that destroyed the nation. You rise up today. You want to take him to go and kill him abroad. At the expense of your people. Your people are suffering. Your people do not even have food. They don't even have what to eat. You, you go to all the UPND bloggers. You see that people are going through hell. Two years down the line. No UPND people are suffering. You abandon them. The man that boasted that he can have breakfast in Zambia. And have dinner. In New York is the one that you want to spend. What happened to you people when you take over power? It's like when you take over power, your brain disappears. Just like when somebody gives their life to Christ, they become fools. They don't reason, they don't reason again. You they don't they don't the the man of God will tell them anything and they believe. Man of God will say, give me your entire salary in January. You believe. You don't reason. You don't ask yourself, what is my children going to eat if I give you my entire salary? It's what happens when you take over that seat. You become fools. Look at a man that nearly set Zambia on fire. If you want to do something good for him, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a convict. You can pardon him. He has money. He can go and treat himself abroad why do you want to waste government money a government that is struggling a government that is limping you still have money to go and take the back and outside the country i what is wrong you provoke me intentionally there are people there are people two years down the line i don't want to go i don't want to fight you pnd you can see that I'm diplomatic in what I'm doing. If I, if I go there, if I go there, UPND, it will take only but one month. It will collapse. People's eye will open. I don't want to go there now. But how can you abandon the people that fought for your party? Your members. They can't even afford millimeter twice in a day. They don't eat. Many of them are, are languishing in the streets. You carry millions to go and take Chishimba Kambuil, to go and have treatment outside the country. Who is he? He's rich. He said he has tracks in Congo. That's why poor people, you're on your own. When I tell you to become rich, do everything possible to become rich. You think that, ah, see, I want, he's forcing you. You want to seek first the kingdom of God and you want to die poor. My dear, if you are poor, there is no justice for you. Rich people don't care about you. Rich people don't, they, you don't exist where they are. If not, tell me, how can, how can, how can Chishimba Kambiri, who, who claim to be rich, he drives the latest Lexus. He opened his mouth and said he has contracts running in Congo. Contracts are running in Congo for him. His children are abroad. His wife is abroad. He can afford any life that he wants. People are dying on the street. And the president wants to take money to go and send him abroad. At the expense of poor people. That money you want to spend on Chishimba and give it to your members. If you don't know, your members are suffering. How many times have you visited your secretariat? There is no food in your secretariat. Nobody go to your secretariat. Don't provoke me. Please, I don't want to go. I don't. If look, if you go there, you will never last. You cannot even finish your tenure. I swore upon Godfather. 
Don't do these things. People are suffering. What are you talking about? People are suffering. People are going through hell. And you want to send Tishim back and we're abroad for medication. Sylvia Masobo is a useless human being. She's a fool. I told you people, that woman, please, hey, 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 this thing that you want to start, ask Eddie Galungu. Ask Eddie Galungu. Ask Boma Lusambo. They will tell you that crossing the path of Sia 1 is the greatest mistake that you can make. We are going to Please, don't go there. Don't go there. There are people that need help in Zambia. There are a lot of them. If you have a lot of money in the government, start taking care of your members. The other day, Lili Mutambo, who contested, who wanted to contest on a UPND ticket, bought Mili Mill. I don't know if it's 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And took it to UPND Secretariat. If you see the way the people there rushed the milli meal. I, I was looking at it. I said, Is these people, are they cadres of the ruling party? Chishimba Kambuiri is supposed to be in prison as we speak today. But if you go to so many prisons today, you will see UPND cadres who are in prison for not doing anything. Many of them are still going to court for doing absolutely nothing. Please, let's not start this thing. I, I beg you in the name of God, Father, I still have a soft spot for you. When that spot goes, ask Eddie Galongi, he will tell you. You will know. Everywhere will be hot for you. I don't want to start that. Do the right thing. Doing the right thing. I'll end the ass for now.